but I would like just some more flexibility, optimization, smoother experiences over flashier new redesigns. All right, WWDC is around the corner with updates to iOS and iPadOS and macOS. So you guys by now have probably all seen that people expect iOS 19 to look kind of like this with more circular icons and a glassy Vision OS style interface. And that's interesting, but that's not very interesting to me. Some of the newer leaks are now saying they're gonna be more like squircle designs. So like circular squares, kind of like how they are now, but even more circular and yeah. That's going to be interesting. However, they do that to me, that looks very Samsung esque, very Android like. That's actually the icon style I choose to use on my Samsung phone that's recording this video. Yeah, I'm recording a video about all this Apple stuff on a Samsung phone. But I don't know. I'm not very into the whole, ooh, a flashy new redesign. It's going to be the best iOS update ever. That's kind of lame to me. I want to see actual change. I want to see iPads become way, way better. Look at even the mini's home screen. Look at how there's so much unused space on the sides of the device there. I don't like that at all, especially when on landscape, it's just like you could totally fit two more rows of icons there. It's just, why does it feel like they're so limited? And it doesn't make any sense to me. Apple's customization is obviously not quite where Android's is either. And I don't really need it to be, but I would like just some more flexibility, optimization, smoother experiences over flashier new redesigns. Some of the leaks are saying though that they're going to be optimizing performance along with this new look. So it's not gonna be just one or the other. We're gonna get both this year. That sounds a little too good to be true, to be honest, but I, hey, I'm all for it, absolutely. But what's really interesting to me is the iPad OS rumors, probably things that will be exclusive to the Pro iPads, definitely something that the Mini is not going to be getting, maybe the iPad Airs, but we'll have to wait and see how Apple rolls that out. So for example, this is something that iPad OS 19 could have where it has some kind of menu bar like Mac OS when you connect it with a keyboard like the Magic Keyboard and stuff like that, which would be awesome. Could have iPhone mirroring capabilities, could have Finder on it. Those are more speculation than actual leaks. All we really got leaked is that they are going to have that menu bar very likely and have better multitasking capability and better window management. So some kind of stage manager 2.0 that isn't so restrictive where I can't even move this off the screen without pushing it into the stage over here or kind of get that out of my way a little bit. Everything just has to be seen at all times. It's just very clunky, very tablet-like. Definitely not a desktop feeling interface at all. So hopefully that will change and get significantly better. And all that is great, but hear me out. We need more desktop apps, not necessarily even desktop interfaces. This will help, this will be good. But if Final Cut Pro still doesn't support plugins on the iPad, it's still going to be half as useful as Final Cut Pro on desktop. If DaVinci Resolve on iPad still only has native support for two pages, it's still going to be a fraction of the usefulness as DaVinci Resolve on a desktop. Things like that. It's just hard to still say that that fixes the problem with iPads. If they really want to fix the iPad problem, they open up the App Store on iPad OS allow you to sideload things off of websites like macOS can do, and literally let you download the macOS versions of apps. They can warn you that it's not supported natively and that you'll have to use a keyboard and mouse when using them. Great, let us download them anyway. I'm sure these Apple Silicon iPads that are running the exact same chips can handle it. So until they can literally get the same apps, that's my biggest concern. I honestly don't mind the iPad OS experience for the most part. I will greatly welcome these improvements to stage manager and window management, but in no way is this promising finder. Some people are thinking that, but it's not promising it. 
and in no way is it promising iPhone mirroring or any of those other Mac exclusive features. It would be awesome if it did. I would love them there, but all we're probably getting is the menu bar, useful, but not revolutionary, and better window management, useful, not revolutionary. It's the apps that are holding it back more than just the interface. But let me know in the comments down below what you think. Do you think the interface is what's stopping you from really using your iPad as a productivity machine? Or do you think it's the apps themselves? It should also get all the refreshed UI elements that iOS 19 is getting. I think macOS is getting those same elements as well. So they're all gonna look fresh and Vision OS-like if that matters to you. So I filmed this video a couple weeks ago and then even more things came out about WWDC, namely the names of all the different operating systems. As you hear, I refer to them as iOS and iPadOS 19 and stuff like that. Well, it's looking like that's not going to be the case. They're gonna be called iOS, iPadOS, macOS, watchOS, tvOS 26 for the year 2026, as that's the primary year this operating system will be used in, which is basically a rebranding of the names. This does kind of go along with all of this refreshing of design and all that kind of stuff. It makes sense that this is the year they change the naming scheme to. So that's interesting. Again, that's not really the point though, right? We wanna see actual change and real usable differences. I've also heard new leaks and rumors that there's probably going to be more like a gap year for Apple intelligence this year. So I don't know if there really is gonna be an Apple intelligence 2.0 this year they're probably going to mention it as little as possible they canceled some of their typical yearly post wwdc interviews so they won't be doing those i have a feeling they know there's gonna be people upset and up in arms about this version and how little they talked about apple intelligence but i could be wrong obviously it's around the corner literally less than a week from today, but I'll definitely be downloading iPad OS and iOS 26, probably Mac OS 26, probably watch OS 26, all on day one. So be subscribed for that. And yeah, we'll see what they can actually change and how they can actually improve our experiences. Right now, Google is just so ahead when it comes to AI. Is that because they're collecting more data? That very well could be, data does help advance these large language models quicker that's for sure so maybe apple's own privacy standards has made their growth of the ai smaller and take more time and is that beneficial to you guys or is that worse let me know all that kind of stuff in the comments down below but yeah, One UI 8 and Android 16 is all in beta now. So I'm trying One UI 8 on my S25 Ultra. There's some interesting features there too. Let me know if you want a comparison with Samsung's latest to Apple's latest when it comes out and all that other stuff. I just want to see them actually follow through with their Siri promises because they haven't delivered on most of the features that they said Siri was going to be able to do later that year or in the coming year hasn't happened yet. Rumor has it, it will happen, but not right away. It'll be until iOS 19.4 or something like that, which is still almost a year off. So yay, more waiting for the same features that we were already promised to have on our devices. Anyways, guys, that's it for this video. I didn't want to be super down on iPad OS 19. I am excited for these features. I really, really am. I'm just worried that they're not going to actually solve the problem that most people have with the iPad. Like, I would love being able to have multiple audio streams playing at the same time. Like, just simple desktop level features that we just don't get on here that are, should be so easy to enable, but they're just not here. Let me know down in the comments below what feature you would need iPads to be able to do for them to be a full laptop replacement. For me, it's basically third-party plugin supports, no more dumbed down mobile optimized apps. I want true desktop apps that for anything in the productivity and creator spaces. People who use those apps like Excel and Word, 
they want the full versions. People who use video editing apps, they want the full version. People who use the photo editing apps, they want the full versions. They don't want dumbed down versions. They want the actual thing. Shaper 3D is a 3D modeling app that is not dumbed down at all for iPads. It's doable. Let's make that the standard. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to the channel and like the video. It really does help the channel out a lot and help me to grow and be able to reach more people and continue making content like this. If you like the shirt I'm wearing, this came from the GraphX Tech store. So go to graphxtech.com to see all of the different merch options there. Anything you get will help support this channel as well. If you're interested in my setup that I have here at all, all the equipment I use is gonna be linked in the description down below as well. And as always guys, have a great rest of your day.